a worker, workers, students. I say pleasant, even though the situation might not be as pleasant as we want it to be, and even though the situation might be. Okay, yeah, even though the situation might be a little bit off to what we normally are accustomed to when Mr. George is around, I still wish and pray that we'll celebrate his life as best as we can in these circumstances. So welcome all, and to set the tone for this evening's ceremony of Mr. George's life, I'd just like us to join with the organist, Minister Byron Sylvester, as we sing, Father along will understand it. We we'll just sing the first verse and the chorus of that song. But before we start, the lives of many, many persons and many organizations. I call upon Mr. Gerard Sincere of the St. Andrews Basketball League to pay tribute to Mr. George. Mr. Sincere. Special good afternoon to the family of Andre. I stand here in the capacity of technical director of the St. Andrews Basketball Fraternity, which is a volunteer organization that came out of the lockdown and we basically train kids on Saturdays and during the summer on basketball and we also teach them life skills. And so I've been asked to pay tribute to Andre Tribute to Andre Bonke George, husband, father, brother, uncle, and friend. In love and memory and deep appreciation of your contribution, we pay tribute to a dear friend whose passion and dedication profoundly influenced the development of basketball as a commentator and an advisor. Andre was not just a friend but a true pillar of the basketball community, living an indelible mark on the sport we cherish. As a commentator, his voice resonated with clarity and enthusiasm, painting vivid pictures of the game for all. With each word, he brought the quote to life, capturing the intensity, drama, and excitement of every play. His humor, insightful analysis, and deep understanding of the game enriched our experience, making us feel 
as though we were right there on the court immersed in the action. Beyond his role as a commentator, our brother served as a trusted advisor, offering invaluable guidance and wisdom to players, coaches, and administrators alike. His encyclopedic knowledge of basketball, coupled with the genuine love for the sport, made Andre an indispensable resource for those seeking to improve their skills, strategies, and overall understanding of the game. But perhaps what truly set our brother apart was not just his expertise, but the unwavering kindness, generosity, and warmth of spirit he showed all. Andre approached every interaction with humility and grace, treating everyone with respect and whether it was offering words of encouragement to a struggling student, athlete, or sharing a laugh with a fellow game official, coach, spectator, or referee. His presence brought joy and camaraderie to all who had the privilege of knowing him. Today, as we reflect on the legacy of our dear brother, we are reminded of the profound impact he had on the basketball community and everyone he encountered. His passion for the game inspired us to reach new heights. His wisdom guided us through challenges, and his friendship enriched our lives in countless ways. Though Andre may no longer be with us in body, his spirit lives on in the innumerable memories we hold dear to our hearts and the enduring influence he has left on the sport we love. As we continue to celebrate the game of basketball, we do so with gratitude for the remarkable and selfless contribution Andre made to us. In honor of our dear friend Andre Bonte George, may we strive to emulate his passion, kindness, and dedication to life in general, ensuring that his legacy continues to inspire future generations of students players, commentators, and the basketball enthusiasts for years to come. I will miss you, my friend. The conversations on the court. All right, now it's looking at soccer in the park. Rest in peace, dear friend. <laughs> and thank you for everything you gave us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sincere. Uh, P642, P642, if you're within my hearing, please report on the outside. I'm told that you did not uh, report on the outside. P642, please report on the outside, close to your vehicle or in your vehicle. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we heard from Mr. Sincere. We saw how deep the wound that Mr. George had left. The next person happens to be his friend and supervisor at the same time. So I call upon Mr. Peter Regis to pay tributes to Mr. George.
So while Mr. Regis comforts himself, please remember that Father along will know all about it and Father along will understand why. In January, it was my turn and Mr. George was there by my side. Not too long after, I'm standing here having to guide the words that are said about him. Life is indeed a journey, and that journey always ends one way. And the only how that journey will not end one way is if Jesus Christ appears tomorrow and catches us alive. And I don't think that God has any intention to appear tomorrow. So, <laughs> so each day someone leaves us. It's painful, real painful, but we have to cope. Honorable Emlyn Pear, Member of Parliament for St. Andrews Southeast, members of District 3, supervisory team, the wife, students, children, and family of my dear friend, Mr. Andrew George. In the corridors of our memories, there are certain individuals who leave an indelible mark whose presence brightens every corner they touch. Mr. Andrew George was one such soul, a beacon of dedication, commitment, and unwavering passion for teaching. Today, as we gather to honor his memory, we celebrate a remarkable educator whose impact reached far beyond the walls of the classroom. Mr. George's journey began on, in the education system on the 6th September, 1999 at Grenville Secondary School where he imparted knowledge until the 5th of March, 2000. Moving forward in his noble profession, he shared his wisdom at Wesley College, leaving a lasting impact until the 2nd of May, 2003. Though his time at J.W. Fletcher Memorial was brief from July of 20, sorry, from May of, to July of 2003, his commitment to shaping young minds was unwavering. It was from September the 1st, 2003, that Mr. George found his home at the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, where for an incredible 18 years, until 2021, he nurtured generations of students. It was here, sorry, it was there that his dedication to education, his kindness, and his unwavering support for his students truly shone. In 2021, he was transferred to Grenville Secondary School, continue to inspire and educate until his final days. Mr. George was more than a teacher. He was a master of his craft. His classes was not just lessons. They were captivating experiences, expertly delivered with a blend of expertise and enthusiasm. With a well-managed classroom, he effortlessly guided his students through the intricate parts of knowledge, leaving a lasting impression on each young mind. In the arts of redirection, Mr. George was a master tactician, skillfully guiding attention away 
from where it shouldn't linger. This is a true story I'm going to give you now. I wasn't part of the St. Davis Catholic staff as yet, but he gave that story. I recall a particular instance when the meticulous Mrs. Maudlin Ferguson, then principal of St. David's Catholic Secondary School, was conducting her routine inspection of teachers' records. Mr. George, with his characteristic finesse, found himself without the required lesson plans. Unperturbed, he had a plan up his sleeve. With a well-timed statement that stimulated Mrs. Ferguson's curiosity. He cleverly steered the conversation into a lively discussion. It was as if he had orchestrated the scene from the start. In that moment, the need for meticulous paperwork faded into the background, and what emerged was a testament to Mr. George's ability to navigate any situation with charm and wit. His skill in artful diversion was not just a tool, but a hallmark of his presence, leaving a lasting impression on all fortunate enough to witness his skills. So you can imagine teachers in the staff room that time, they were very happy that Mr. George got Ms. Ferguson into a conversation where she forgot everything about looking at lesson plans. But it wasn't just his teaching prowess that set Mr. George apart. It was his ability to bring joy into the learning environment. He had a talent for turning the staff room into a lively sanctuary, filling the air with laughter that could make even the sternest of education crack, educators sorry, crack a smile. His jokes were legendary, capable of bringing tears of laughter to our eyes and lightening even the heaviest of days. Beyond the acad academic realm, Mr. George was a fervent supporter of sports, particularly athletics and basketball. As the basketball coach of St. David's Catholic Secondary School, he poured his heart into nurturing young talents instilling in them not just the skills of the game, but also the values of teamwork and perseverance. His dedication on the court was matched only by his fervor in the commentator's booth. Mr. George was an electrifying sports commentator whose voice resonated across many educational districts. His, service were, his services were in constant demand sought after for the energy and excitement that he brought to every game. Today, as we bid farewell to this extraordinary educator, we are left with a void that words struggle to fill. Mr. George's legacy will endure in the countless lives he touched, the minds he inspired, and the laughter he shared. Though he may have departed from this world, his spirit remains woven into the fabric of our school's history, a shining example of what it means to live a life of passion and purpose. In our hearts, Mr. George will forever remain the dedicated teacher, the vibrant jokester, the spirited coach, and the beloved commentator. May his memory continue to inspire us to approach each day with the same zest for life and love for others that he effort, so effortlessly embodied. Rest in peace, my dear friend. Rest in peace, Mr. George. You have left an indelible mark on the hearts and your legacy will forever shine brightly in the halls of particularly St. David's Catholic Secondary School and the Grenville Secondary School. May he rest in peace.
Indeed, we need another amen. amen. A more powerful one. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we roll along and we roll in along as quickly as possible because there are so many things to be said about Mr. George. The next person, ladies and gentlemen, happens to be a very close and dear friend of Mr. George. In fact, I used to hear a lot about this particular person on the job. We had many disagreements and agreements over that. But it is what it is. And so I invite the friend of Mr. George and the parliamentary representative for the St. Andrews Southeast District, Mrs. Emlyn Pierre, to give her tributes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would have heard of a lot of those conversations, too. Let me say a very warm good afternoon to Lindona, immediate family, brothers and sisters, all those close to the deceased, Andrew George, all of those who were close to him from the basketball fraternity, the teaching fraternity, and just people who have come to love and know a wonderful person. I actually want to start this afternoon by quoting from my 19-year-old son when I asked him, what was your thoughts about Mr. George? And I only asked him that this morning. And I chose to quote him because I believe every student that would have interacted with Andre George may have almost the same response. And I'm saying why I'm actually using this quotation. It was a few days, I believe about two days after CXC decided that it was going to go ahead with the CXC exams, the CSEC exams, during the COVID pandemic. My son was praying for a deferral of the exam. And I kept saying to him, be prepared for whatever. And I never forget this, about two days after the announcement, Andre called me and he said, he asked me the question, is TJ prepared? And I said to him, well, prepared or not, TJ has to face the exam. He said, I want to talk to TJ for myself. Long story short, my question to TJ this morning, that was his response. What was your thoughts about Mr. George? Just a cool guy, easy to work with. We were going to use laptops, but because of COVID, we barely got an opportunity to actually draw. But he borrowed me, and I was not even aware of that, but he borrowed me a drawing board so I could practice drawing in case, because we were not yet drawing in school. I believe for me, that statement captures who Andre George really was, a person who genuinely cared. Ladies and gentlemen, family members, today we gather here to honor the memory of Andre George, a beloved father, husband, brother, uncle, teacher, so much more. When I was asked by his family to do a tribute, I realized that the same day I was supposed to be on an assignment overseas. It really did mean a lot to me just to be present when I learned that it was possible to reschedule the arrangement. Andrew was a man of remarkable passion and dedication, particularly evident in his love for sports, and I single out basketball, 
education, and community development. As a teacher, Andre was more than just an educator. He was more than just a teacher. He was, in my opinion, a guiding light for countless young minds. His commitment to seeing students reach their fullest potential was unwavering. He believed in every child. He invested in them with passion and he inspired them with big dreams. I had a personal experience listening to a student. I was actually shocked. Within about three months, the difference in that child's opinion to mathematics, simply because of his engagement with Andre. His whole perception of math totally changed. Beyond the classroom, Andre's impact extended far into the community. He was always eager to lend a helping hand to share his boundless energy, and to work tirelessly towards a brighter future, in his opinion, for all. His purposefulness and determination were truly inspiring. I had the, the, the privilege of visiting Andre, both in hospital and at home. And despite his illness, in spite of his illness, his passion, his de determination lived on. I recall on the very last occasion I had to engage with him, I was in the company of another person as well. I remember my parting words to him. He stretched his hand out, he held mine, and he literally struggled to promise that he will be there to do what he has to do. His optimism, no doubt, left me with the belief that he would overcome his challenges and that he was going to win that battle. But as fate would have it, Andre's time with us was cut short. And now as we mourn his loss, we must also remember the legacy that he left behind. It is a legacy of passion, compassion, and an unwavering dedication to making a big difference in the lives of others. Though Andre may no longer be with us in body, I am firmly of the belief, based on my last conversation with him, that his spirit lives on, and we pray that it lives on also in each of us who was touched by his kindness, his wisdom, and no doubt, his love. And so it falls upon us to carry on his work, to honor his memory, and to ensure that this legacy continues. Through this terrible ordeal, there is indeed something beautiful that came out of it. Andre surrendered his life to Christ and became very passionate about serving God. As he shared, I knew he could not wait to recover to share his own testimony with his friends. Those were actually part of the conversation. But I believe God had a better plan for him. He wanted Andre to himself. So let us remember Andre, not just with tears of sadness, but with hearts filled with gratitude for the time that he shared with us and with a renewed commitment to continue this important work that he started, this important work that he dedicated his life to. Let us now think of Andre as being in a better place 
with the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Minister. Not Minister, but Madam Representative. There's always hope, brothers and sisters. There's always hope. Andre left St. David's Secondary School to return to his alma mater, the GSS. And the truth is, before he left St. David's Sec to go back to GSS, he was extremely passionate about TD, in truth. And he would give off his Saturdays to give classes to the students at GSS because they had a little shortage there. Andrew was so passionate that he couldn't afford to be second place. He always wanted to be at the top. And once his students couldn't give him 100%, he was never satisfied. So eventually he left us and went to GSS, and today he has become part of them, and I now invite them to pay the tributes to Andre. So as I was saying, I now invite the GSS. Oh, here they are, sorry. First Corinthians 15:55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? In Ghana, in the words to describe Mr. Andrew George, who Mr. Andrew George was, as a professional and a friend, is one that comes with much trepidation as it highlights the reality of his passing. This finality is met with much grief, regret, and loss. In our hearts, as we say goodbye to a colleague, friend, and alumni. It also puts us as members of, of staff in a reflective and introspective mode, grappling with first his sickness and then his unfortunate passing. The cliche, life is unpredictable and no one knows the time or the hour, has definitely come home to roast. Andre or Bonte, as he's affectionately called, was industrious, highly opinionated, very candid in his speech, creative, innovative, the life of the party, one of the best technical teachers Grenada ever had, an avid sportsperson, announcer, fisherman, grave builder, tailor, and a person full of zest, always well attired and ready for work. As a school, we are always proud to sing our praises, especially when it is about the fruit of our labor. Mr. Andrew George was a pupil of the Grenville Secondary School from 1988 to 1993. It was here he developed and honed his many talents in the technical and vocational areas. At that time, his love for sports germinated, and though trying his skills in other sports, he participated mainly in basketball. The tall, lanky young man struggled in his, first, in his first year of Form 5. However, in his second year of Form 5, he did a second year, he demonstrated that he was resilient and studied hard, as his previous year was not so successful. His success in 1994 was as a result of his long nights and days studying at the school. 
His calling as a teacher began within our four walls in 1999. Mr. George is the very epitome of what Grenville Secondary represents and inculcates. He was a man who has shown tremendous appreciation for technical skills, educational and holistic development for our nation, of our nation's children. When his appointment ended, he was loaned to the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, a move that initially did not sit well with him as he wanted to continue his contribution to his alma mater. It was in 2000, he returned to Grenville Secondary. Being initially appointed as a mathematics teacher, he was later redeployed to teach technical drawing and industrial arts and mathematics at the lower level. Having had a tumultuous transition, his mantra was anything for the children, or I'm here for the children, nothing else. And this is a in his very matter of the fact tone. At the Grenville Secondary School, Mr. George was form master of Form 1G. And when he got that appointment, he swiftly rushed into my office and said, oh, What are you doing me that for? You know me, I don't really like you know, this form master thing, but anyway, I'll do it. He assisted with basketball and was a member of Vivek's house. Red House, and he was glad because it was similar to the Red House that he was at St. David's Catholic Secondary. The highlight of the school year for him was the Hillary term, sports season. As one listens to his voice on the microphone, he boosts the confidence of the children. He ran the cross country to give the students moral support. He engaged students regularly by chatting with them what was then the shade on the, of the tank to motivate and find way, some way. He motivated and find some way to make a joke or to make students feel happy around him or at least create a safe space for students to come to him. This period of time, the Easter season, was the best time for him because Mr. George hid away in classes, helping students make kites. If the kite was exemplary, he complimented students, you win already. But if it was not, he said, man, you come last. Two phrases he used frequently. Because he had a passion for making pants and skirts, when he saw students who were not attired properly, he immediately called out to them, hey, little boy, hey, little girl. And with command and authority in his voice, he informed them that their uniform needs to be fixed. Mr. George was always ready to extend his assistance in whatever capacity to his alma mater. In the year 2006, Grenville Secondary was the only secondary school in Grenada with universal secondary education. And there you had Mr. George, one of the men involved in building new rooms to try to accommodate the increase or the large influx of students. Now to say Mr. George had a passion for education is an understatement as he went beyond the call of duty for students. With the impromptu departure of our technical drawing teacher a few years ago, Mr. George was ready to assist the Granville Secondary School while still being a teacher at the St. David's Catholic Secondary. He ensured that Mr. Maxwell, the former head of department, got the requisite assistance for the students to prevent and to mitigate any issues 
with learning and the complication with the school-based assessment. To further compound the love and selflessness he had for Grenville Secondary, Mr. Judge instructed his technical drawing students at St. Davis Catholic Secondary School to travel to Grenville to have classes and to ensure that every student doing technical drawing was successful regardless of the school they attended. It is on this premise that he gave human service to education, sports, and community development. He worked tirelessly to ensure the success and sustainability of his students. He poured his heart and soul into his craft because, as he said, I like to win. Mr. George volunteered in the areas of mathematics and as a motivational speaker with the STAR program, a program that targeted young men who had behavioral issues and challenges at school. He was able to adapt his, adapt his strategies to facilitate student learning and use his life experiences to motivate the young men. Mr. George was a very proud individual. And when he walked along the corridor, it was like he was modeling. His well-tailored pants, his shirt neatly tucked in, and his belt, tie, and shoes in perfect coordination. As he so eloquently puts it, I am a technical man. The only thing I do not make are my socks and underpants. <laughs> now, having worked with Mr. George at the St. Davis Catholic Secondary, I was cognizant of the type of experience I would have as a teacher with him as a school leader. He was direct with his request, apologetic when he fell short, supportive when he sees merit in initiatives and plans. But when his mind is made up on a matter, it is difficult to change. Upon starting my engagement at Grenville Secondary, Mr. George remarked, Mr. Mann, you're following me, and gave me stern instructions and expectations of his institution. And so I look forward to his stories, as he was the best storyteller, as he was candid and spare no information when giving a story. When you get a story, when you get, if you know Mr. George, was the highs and lows of his life and life experiences you received. And while preparing, I remembered one story that he said, he told us where we was at St. Davis one time. He was sick for a period of time and he couldn't find the cause. He couldn't find what reason why he was down. And when he visited the doctor, the doctor inquired what he consumed. He indicated that he was, for some time he was consuming lime juice. And so when he got back home, he wanted to cut down all lime trees because he felt the lime juice contributed to some issues he was having with his man tool at the time. <laughs> and to this, that date, he never wanted to make any joke with lime tree or lime juice at any point in time. <laughs> when he built his home, you got the nail by nail, brick by brick coverage. When he became a fisherman, we heard about his daily catch and we received in his sharing. As a tailor, we knew all of the students' pants he sold. He stopped them on the corridor and compared them with others to blow his own trumpet. <laughs> and don't talk about the relationships. And the wifey, we'll leave it there. 
As we reflect on the impact he had on our lives, let us carry forward his legacy with pride and gratitude. Though he may have gone, he may be gone, his teachings will forever be echoed in our hearts. Shaping us into the best versions of ourselves. Our collective thoughts and prayers go to you, Ms. George, and the, and the George family, and the entire Grenville community. Rest in peace, dear Mr. George. Your light will continue to shine brightly, illuminating the paths for generations to come. Thank you. So, the last form that he was attached to will now pay tribute, followed by the staff.
life's a dispense. Now it's long in the valleys of trials and temptations. That's where your faith is really put to the test. For the Good afternoon. Hello. I'm not hearing. Good afternoon, all. Okay. Good afternoon, all. I am aware that in moments like these, words seem futile as it cannot ease your grief or your pain. But within the human experience, we still endeavor to use words to add comfort. I hope that my words today will act as a tribute to Andre and also to add comfort to the family and friends. My poem is entitled, Georgie Podgy. Georgie Podgy pudding and pie, always adorned with a fancy tie. Accessorizing was part of his name as he definitely was a leader in this game. He was always coordinated with his matching belt and shoes, to which I always gave him positive reviews. His hands were a gift to most, as he was a tailor and a creator. His voice was also a gift to most, as he was definitely the best of hosts. He hosted many queen shows. He was the ultimate pro. During the show, his favorite quote was, happy am I. Georgie was definitely not shy. His passionate voice echoing on the mic during the sports season, he was indeed a shining beacon. He was a man of song character and principle, and most of his students saw him as invincible. Many students saw him as just, and therefore willingly gave him their trust. Andre can be described as family-oriented. He was always talking about family. They were his happy reality. 
His second love was a silver automobile. Talking about it always gave him a thrill. On a hot day like this, my coconut water was sure. He was striving to be a jelly water entrepreneur. I can picture him walking down the corridor, looking like a well-dressed police officer. Looking like a well-dressed police officer. I can hear his voice from miles away, which told me that his class was fully underway. Georgie, a teacher, a father, a brother, a husband, and a friend like you can never be replaced. Your memory will never be erased. Your contribution to our lives is definitely considered to be our prize. Uh, all right. So, good afternoon. All right. So, I, I, I want to do a tribute to Mr. George as well. Bunty, as I call him. Right? And I want to do it in, for various capacities, right? So, I want to do it representing the Greenville Secondary. I want to do it as the founder and owner, coach, and the coaching staff of Spotlight Basketball Club. And I also want to do it from an entertainment perspective. Bunty was one of the individuals that rated me as an artist when I used to sing soca and do my little thing. Now. So, I must represent for him in that sense. So, uh, it's a song that you all know, but I put my little twist on it, right? We created a verse for it, and I'll just go do it, take my time, and just do it for him, all right? So, it goes like that, say. You're gone away. Put up your lighters for your friends, them we passed away. And gone away. Your day or so today, then tomorrow you're gone away. We say gone away, yeah. We feel it for you, cause you're just a reason what day. Gone away, yeah. And gone away, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jaja sleep, somebody wake him. Done with the joke, tell me, say you're plating. No, we cry when we see your body dress up in a coffin, but to go down in a grave. And we really want to know where you're gone. Miss you, but we have to carry on. We wish RIP means return if possible, but we know that can go on. We ask why you're gone away. Put up your lighters to your friend George, we passed away. Gone away. We say him day yesterday and today him gone away. Lord, gone away. Yeah. We feel it for him cause we just a reason what day. Oh, gone away. Yeah. Gone away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mount our plans where you just make. And brother, look now, you're gone when none no get done yet. I know you had a bag of things where you want to do, but it like say that soon they can't come yet. We wonder when we are going to see you back. I could adjust in our dreams. We no care if it's even that. We'll never ever lose with faith in a God, but we can't understand why God would allow that. So you're gone away. Put up your lighters to your friend George, we passed away. Gone away. Your day is so today, then tomorrow you're gone away. Me say you're gone away. Yeah. We feel it for you, cause we just a reason what day. Oh, gone away. Yeah. Gone. And this is me now talking to him personally from my heart and not the song. So, uh, this is really hard to accept. That you're not going to see your sons receive them first paycheck. To every man that is a big step. And that's why it burns me hard to know you really took your last breath. But to your sons I'll be an asset. And even though you're dead and gone bro, you'll always have my respect. I know your wife will be depressed. But my prayer is that God will protect her for you. I know your family will be depressed. But my prayer is that God will protect them for you. I know your students will be depressed, Judge. But my prayer is that God will protect them for you. The teaching staff will be depressed, but my prayer is that God will protect them for you. A whole heap of friends will be depressed, but my prayer is that God will protect them for you. And to everyone who will be depressed, 
My prayer is that God will protect them while you gone away. I put up my hands last time for you because you're gone away. Me say you're gone away. Just yesterday we talking, but today yo, you're gone away. We say you're gone away. Yeah. We go feel it for you because we can reason the same way. You're gone away. Yeah. yeah, judge, big up yourself. Respect. Yeah, man. Indeed, his spirit has left his body, and we won't see his body for much longer, but he'll be close to our hearts. Mr. George, Andre, among other things, was very passionate about his union. In fact, whenever the union called, he responded. And like was said, when he made up his mind, when he made up his mind, his mind was well made up. So even though there were times when I tried to convince him otherwise and said, no partners, you're going the wrong way, I could just see him walking down the step, heading for Sherry, dusting the dust off his trousers, and say, boss, my union call, I have to answer. And now I ask the President General of the Union to come and pay his tributes to Mr. George. Oh, I should say President General Jude Bartholomew. My apologies. Good afternoon, church. God is good all the time. Psalm 34, verses 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. Mr. Andre Eric George entered into sunset on March 8, 2024, at the age of 47. On behalf of the Grenada Union of Teachers, I extend deepest sympathy and condolences to the family of the late Andre George, his wife, Mistress Lindana George, his two children, Andre George Jr. and Drendan George, siblings, other members of the George family, relatives, and friends. And by extension, the president and members of St. Andrew's branch, the president and members of St. David's branch, the president and members of St. George's branch, the principal members of staff and students of Grenville Secondary School, St. David's Catholic School, Wesley College, Palmer, now J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary School, and Paraclete Government School. Mr. George's contribution to education can be felt in so many places, so many schools across the nation, so many branches, parishes, and districts. Mr. George almost taught in the whole of Grenada, St. David's Catholic Secondary School, where he taught for almost 17 years was his life. He taught for about five years at Grenville Secondary School, his alma mater. According to his dear wife, Lindana, he loved St. David's Catholic Secondary School so much, but he wanted to end his teaching career at his alma mater, Grenville Secondary School. That's why he was transferred there, and his wish was prophetic in nature. He attended Grenville Secondary School as a student, and his life climax ended there as a teacher. It was rather interesting. Mr. George and Mr. Kwame Hippolyte were both friends and colleagues at St. David's Catholic Secondary School. While Mr. George became a teacher at Grenville Secondary School, his friend Kwame Hippolyte became principal at the same Grenville Secondary School. Not only that, Mr. George starts at Palmer, now J.W. Fletcher, for a short while. Mr. Kwame Hippolyte also taught at J.W. Fletcher, giving life to the words, where he leads me, I will follow. Brother Andrew George 
also imparted knowledge at Parkley Government School and Wesley College. He touched, impacted, imparted, and transformed the lives of so many children wherever he went. He was doing good. He was well-loved, respected, and appreciated by members of staff in all schools where he taught, especially St. David's Catholic Secondary School, where they had a bond of friendship. His death hit the teachers of students of St. David's Catholic Secondary School so hard they were crushed in spirit, and the same goes for other institutions where he taught. His favorite subject that he taught was technical drawing. He did some constructions in his spare time. I was told he built his own house and constructed for other persons also. His wife confessed and professed that Mr. Judge was a self-made tailor. He learned the skill on his own and that he sold his own clothes to go to work. He put out one of his friends at SCSS, Mrs. Dale Bob, in some nice hot style of clothing. <laughs> and that he even sold school uniform for children. Whenever he landed in a place, all eyes was on him. The whole place was at a standstill. Everybody knew that Mr. George was in town, and he took great pride in himself. Mr. Andrew George was involved in almost everything. He was friendly, jovial, hilarious, comical, loving, kind, and generous in nature. Sportsman, entertainer, commentator. Mr. George would light up any sports and make a dead sport come back to life with the style of commentary. Secondary schools, athletic games, primary school games, he was greatly missed at St. David's Catholic Secondary School Sports this year and at the next GUT St. David's Branch Sports. The air atmosphere crowd response was completely different without the magical, sweet voice of Brother Andre George. Mr. George was a basketball player for many years. Sports, too, was his passion. Where Brother Andrew George was boss is in the Mother's Day Queen show in St. Andrew as the MC, where patrons look forward to every year. Jokes were so. He made mothers and everybody laugh until they cry. Those who forget to laugh in the Mother's Day Queen show completed their laughter the following day. He was the official MC for the St. Joseph Convent, St. Andrew's Queen show. Anything for the children, when he rendered his service, no charge. Mr. George had a very special love for children. He was very devoted and committed to his wife, children, and family. And as his wife said, and I quote, he put his wife and children and family before anything else. This was evident even when he was sick and at home. Before he was hospitalized in great pain, he dropped his children to school every morning and picked them up in excruciating pain every evening but he didn't, he did it religiously. From a union perspective, Brother Andrew George was a shop steward of the St. David's Catholic Secondary School for many years. He looked forward to May Day to have fun with teachers and workers. He played a mass on the street for May Day. He actively participated in trade union activities, both at the branch and national level. In almost all of the industrial action for pension, dark salary, and salary increases, Mr. George was there. He marched on the street so that others could live to enjoy their pension and benefits. Unfortunately, he did not live long enough to enjoy his. That is why no teacher should work in the classroom up to 65 years. But Andre George was a legend a hero in his own right. Although his life was a short-lived one, he lived it well. His contribution to education, sports, culture, community development, young people, nation building, and duty will be forever etched in our hearts and memories. Though we are saddened by his passing, we are comforted by the words of scripture, Romans chapter eight, verses 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation, 
or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creatures shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Brother Andrew Eric Judge, the Grenada Union of Teachers, St. David's Branch, St. George's Branch, and St. Andrew's Branch salute you. Our Christian faith assures us in the scriptures, John chapter 11, verses 25 to 26, Jesus said to her, and I quote, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing me will never die. <clears throat> and I will raise George up. And I will raise George up. And I will raise George up on the last day. And I will raise George up. And I will raise George up. And I will raise George up on the last day. Until we meet again, Brother Andrew Eric George, may your soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you. Thank you, President General. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Minister of Education, Minister Responsible for Education with us, Minister Honorable David Andrew. I invite him to the podium to offer a few words. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, allow me to acknowledge the leadership of the Assembly. Allow me to acknowledge the MP for St. Andrew Southeast. Allow me to acknowledge family members and friends. Well wishes all. The quality of a man's life is not in its length as much as it is in its impact. And quite easily, we would say that Andre George, his life was probably too short, much too short. But I guarantee you the impact of his life wasn't in, in the length of it as much as in its impact. I knew Andre George from the days when he was a student. I started to teach at Grenville Secondary and then he was a senior student, a very senior student on his way almost out. And then a few years later, he came back and joined the staff. So we became colleagues. And he started teaching. I remember him as a student. He was one guy who could make mathematics look easy. This guy had a thing for math. And he would just do the math. And everybody just began to know that the judges were good with math, thanks to Andre, as far as my memory serves. Later. As a co-member of staff, we became co-announcers as I became one of the announcers at sports meet at Granville Secondary. And then we ended up in some other fora doing athletics commentary in sports meet. So Andre and I go back, a way back. But you know, I, he was a lively, free spirit, always optimistic, he would never be afraid to say, Andrew, I have something we need to talk about, you know. He would always be open. He's always ready for a discussion. And I think those attributes, it's my hope, 
will be treasured by you, his children, his loved ones, his family. Andre, as a long-standing educator, I know, has made significant contributions at Grenville Secondary, St. David's Catholic, and wherever he got the opportunity to be an educator like he was, he took it. Even if it were on occasions at the bar where he got to school some people. So he was truly an educator. And so to his family, his wife, children, siblings, I just want to say to you, it's your process to grieve, and folks might tell you be strong, I'll tell you be real, I'll tell you this grief process is yours to, to bear, and none of us could walk it for you, none of us could feel it for you, but I pray for God's grace and his strength and everything that you need to cope and to manage in a time like this. On behalf of the Ministry of Education, our permanent secretaries, the chief education officer, all our senior staff, and teachers, and everyone in the education fraternity, we wish God's strength and God's grace and God's peace that passes all understanding to rest and remain with you in this time of difficulty. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. And we roll along. The staff of SCCSS is queued up to pay their tributes to Mr. George. And so I invite them to start walking up to the stage. There's just one thing I'd like to say. It is my strong belief that Mr. George is among the angels. But I also believe that his spirit shall dwell among us for eternity. With those few words, with those few words, and with Ms. Williams walking a little bit slow, With those few words, I give to you the staff of St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. Ladies and gentlemen, so much has been said 
about Mr. George. I thought we were just going to honor him with music and song. But in moments like these, for some reason, we get a chance to ponder and reflect on Andre some more. I'll just share one little story with you. Earlier on, I told you that Andre never liked second place. He never liked to lose. There was this intercall that SDSS had managed to win 13 straight years. And that year, by the end of the first day, it was well known that this wasn't going to be SDSS year. Mr. George left the stadium shortly after shedding tears. And the next day, he was nowhere to be found because he just couldn't accept defeat. So perfect, Mr. George was. That whenever he was involved, it meant that he had to be on the winning side. <laughs> I thought by the end of that story <laughs> that we were going to be ready. <laughs> so it looks like I have to give another story. I met Mr. George at St. Nevis Catholic Secondary School. I think I joined him there in 2009. And Mr. George appealed to my spirit. Yes, Mr. George appealed to my spirit. And before long, we did not become friends because a friend to me is someone that stands by your side when you need them. And whenever you do not have need for them, you move on. And so I call him affectionately my drinking partner. So he became my drinking partner. And of course, on afternoons after school, we'll find a cozy spot where we can meet, drink, and discuss.
I'm pretty certain, I'm pretty certain, I'm pretty certain that we're all jealous of the angels who sit around the throne tonight. Our loss happens to be there again. But we're comforted by the fact that the spirit of the brother will be back and forth. He doesn't like to be in one spot for too long. So he'll take leave of heaven and come down to visit us at times. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you've been hearing so much about Mr. George, but he has a group of friends who shared a vehicle just like his, and I'd just like to invite them to come on up and pay the tributes before I invite Ms. Steele to come and render a song on behalf of Mr. George. So the BB Club, please, uh, please, 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 we Oh, you're right there, wonderful. A pleasant good evening, everyone. We're from the GND Box Live. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, the Grenada Box Live was launched on December 22nd, 2019, with two members, Scarf and Stafford. However, there's two. Uh, however, there's two of us was about to spark the growth of a family. The group was established after one night when Scaff met our dear brother George at Calico Grenville in the parking lot at 7 p.m. The boat went to buy bread as requested by their lovely wives, but ended up praising each other's BB, showing the ins and outs and the features that came with the ride. As any typical BB or vehicle driver would do, we all oh, are guilty, guilty of this. this. George and Scarf talked for hours, not realizing Calico staff closed up and left. By the time they remembered, the bread was already 11.15 p.m. Can you imagine that? They laughed loudly and then left. No, imagine, now imagine the, the excuse they, they came, came up with, with for no, no bread, bread when we turn home. home. George was the life of the group. His smile was contagious, making all feel welcome and comfortable, as if we had known him for a lot of years. His voice could be heard the loudest at every Box Life event, and even if a member was feeling down, his laughter alone would cheer them up. We would have cookouts, we would boast of his, he would boast sorry of his chef skills, mm -hmm. and mind you, he, he could, could put, put down a pot. pot. The best cowhill soup you ever taste was from him at Batway Beach. Mm -hmm. He was the box life PRO on paper. But really, he was the glue that held us together. We could still hear his voice saying, K. You go bring the drinks. Youths. You go do salad. Scuff. You are stick in. When, when is the next, next ride? ride? He always expressed his love for his wife first, his children second, and his BB third. George really loved his BB, always boasting about how light on gas it was, the acceleration, the space it had, and not forgetting the bent seat feature that is like a bed. Big people thing. If you know, you know. The Box Life was started with a goal of bringing persons with the first, second, and third generation BB, Sycon, XB, and Remian for the sole purpose of sharing parts ideas, flossing rides, and charity work. George played a key role in inviting persons to join our group. We are truly grateful for his drive and motivation. On December 10th, 2023, we organized our first charity drive through the six parishes of Grenada. 
We were able to deliver food hampers to 11 families and two homes. It was one of the greatest desires of George, and we are thankful we got to experience this moment with him. George will be truly missed. We all develop a bond that will never be broken. He will always be in our hearts. Grenada Box, Box Life, Life will never, never be the same, same, but we will do our, our best to honor, honor and eliminate his vibes, his vigor, and, and his passion to push in the Grenada, Grenada Box Life, Life to, to, new, high heights. to new heights. To his wife, children, and family. Thanks, Solace, in the thought that his legacy will live on in the hearts of everyone that he touched with his smile, laughter, and compassion. Dear Andrew George, you are our inspiration. Box Life family forever. May you rest in peace. Amen. Hi, good day to everyone. Um, I'm going to do a tribute in the form of a song named I Watch the Sunrise. the sunrise yeah. one two one two one two one two one two one two the mic no mic no mic Oh, we know your way. 
For you are always close to me, regardless of what happens. The God of the mountains is the God of the valley. In our high times and our low times, He will always be close to us. So ladies and gentlemen, by special request, by special request, I invite Miss Steele to come share a song with us. After that, it will be your time to stand up, stretch your muscles, and worship the Lord. So as soon as Miss Steele is finished, it's your time to stand and worship the Lord in song. So get yourself ready, clear your throats, because we're going to take it to another level. One, two. and every one of us, I love to see the crowd. God is speaking to all of us. He is saying to us, pray and repent, my people. The time is at hand. He is coming sooner than you think. Don't fight for nothing. Empty we come, empty we go to meet us Christ. God gives us a life of excellence. Please, my people, honor your life. If your life is going, honor it. I am standing here to pay my last tribute to our dear brother in Christ. He was with us, 
for a little while. May God bless him and give him a resting place. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. God knows each and every one of us sitting here from our hearts, not our looks, not our ways. So all that is said about our dear brother that is lying there, he knows nothing, he has nothing. Now his labor task is over. It is over and he goes to another place. All that said and done about him, he going to another place. So listen please, his labor task is over. Thank you. Now his labor task is all. Now the battle day is past. Now upon the father's shore lands the voyage of Yes, of earth are tried. There is he, then things are clear. There the work of life is tried by a just a judge than here. There the sinful souls that turn to the cross their dying eyes. All the love of Christ shall learn at his feet in a paradise. In thy gracious keeping, leave him now, thy servant sleeping. There no more the powers of hell can prevail to mother peace. Christ the Lord shall guard him well, he who died for all release. Father, in thy gracious Keeping, leave him now, thy servant sleeping. Earth to earth and dust to dust, calmly now the words we say. Leave in him. To sleep in a trust till the resurrection day. Father, in thy gracious keeping, 
Leave him now, thy servant sleeping. Amen. Amen. Nice. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good afternoon, everyone, as we continue to celebrate the life of our dear friend, Andre George. I now invite Lucina Frank, who would please come now, sister, and do the opening prayer. Good afternoon to everyone. As we are about to pray, I would like everyone to stand, please. Father, we give you thanks. We glorify your name. Father God, we thank you for everything that have done in this place this evening. Lord God, as we mourn in, O oh God, on behalf of our brother, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I ask you, O oh God, to comfort us as family, O oh God, even the siblings by the George side, and even the Celestine by our side. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you said you are the comforter, you are the healer. Oh God, you are everything to us in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, I ask you to touch each and every one of us here, oh God. We may be hurting, oh God, but Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our thoughts. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God, I ask you, oh God, that you will be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Okay, we now invite Asher Frank. Is Asher here? Okay. So we have a special song, Carry Your Candle, and the congregation shall accompany as well. Stand here with my in laws and we'll sing the song There is a Candle because I truly believe within each of us there is a candle. And Andrew would definitely want each and every one here today to go forth and give that candle deep right within you as he has chosen to do for himself. So I invite everyone to join with us as we sing the song and just reflect on who we want to be going forward and the life we want to live and be remembered as. Just waiting on the music. Just bear with us one minute, please.
Thank you very much. Please remain standing for the scripture reading, and we understand that uh, sometimes very difficult in this time of grief to hold ourselves up so we do understand. At this time, we have a first scripture reading, and it's going to be done by Renata George. That's the niece of Andre. Renata, please come. The reading is going to be taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1 to 7. Okay, so we have someone else deputizing for her. Good afternoon, church. The scripture reading is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. And it reads, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while evil days come not. Nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the star, be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few. And those that look out of the windows of the windows be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the streets. When the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up to the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of the music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be burdened, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. However, silver cord be loose, or the golden bowl be broken, or the, pitch, the pitcher be broken, and the fountain of the wheel broken at the chasing. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many Proverbs 10, the preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are of good, and as nail fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by this, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is not a, no end. And much study is the weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep thy, his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every street, with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Here ends the scripture reading. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Paul. Uh, kindly remain standing as we invite the worship team who's going to come now and lead us in the first hymn. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Pleasant afternoon to everyone. Condolences to the family and well wishes of Andre.
Thank you. We have your seats. And we continue. We have a slight change in the tributes. The first tribute will not be Anthony George, but instead it will be Miss Smith. I think I lost my... Just one second. Sorry about that. I got my program all mixed up. So let me make sure. Yes. Um, no, not this program. <laughs> not this program. But let's continue. Um, I will get that person secondly. So we'll take uh, Nathan Frank, the nephew of Andre, to come give tributes, and then I'll get back to that first person shortly. Is Nathan ready and up? Oh, here he comes. Today I'll read a poem written by my mother for my uncle. In loving memories of a special uncle, Andrew George, our Georgie boy, the day you left and gained your wings, my heart just broke in two. I wish you could have stayed with me, but heaven needed you. You left me with the memories, and I love you daily still. No matter how much time goes by, you know I always will. You are a very special person with kindness in your heart. The love we had together grows stronger. Now we're apart. I cannot bring you back, although I wish it every day. But a piece of me went with you the day you went away. Rest in peace, Uncle Andre, our Georgie boy. Thank you. And now I invite Dredon, that's his son? Yeah, that's it. So the son of Mr. George, I want to place him here. Can everyone see him? Yeah. Right, so. So we had to God bless my father. Okay. He was short a good man. He helped us a lot of times. He makes me feel so happy. He ever seen in my entire life. He was the best man I ever see. When he died, we love him so much. We miss him. We always love him in, in entire life. When he died, I was starting to feel so happy. And I was so sad about it. But he changed my life and I was so happy to pray. On this, when I pray to my father, my father always help him a lot of times. And I will really help my father a lot of times. When he told me, he said respect to me. And I was feeling so sad if, if he say that. And I remember that he and me was just friends. And then he used up to me and said everything will be all right. Wonderful, 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 Drayden. Quite comforting. Yes. Uh, I wanted Miss Caden Smith. To be up here, I, 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 I haven't seen her, like she's way out back. So just in case, she can line herself up. Oh, wonderful. And then I have, we got a rush, eh? Following that, Mr. Celestine Shimar, and then Mr. Mr. Alexander. So please, queue up as quickly as we can. Right, so she will be singing, so let's wait for it. A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. 
This song is dedicated. This song is dedicated to the wife, siblings, children, and other close family members. Sometimes it feels cold and you feel all alone, but hold on, better days are coming. It could be rough in this world. I know it ain't easy, but hang on in there. I know better days are coming. You sing good, you sing bad, you've been happy and sad. But just remember that better days, better days are coming. by yourself but so cry cause better days are coming better days better days better It's only a season that you're going through. Just stay focused and never lie. I know people. Feel it inside, but keep on smiling, cause everything will be alright. Better days, better, better days, better. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Better days are coming and better days are coming soon. We all strive to go to a better place. And we are here to help each other get to a better place. You know, I call on Shimar, Shimar Celestine.
afternoon. Before Mr. George became my mother's husband, he was my teacher first at the St. David Catholic Secondary School. He was a jovial, sociable, funny, and very nice person everyone will want to have around them. He never played when schoolwork was involved, but also made classes a great one for everyone that knew him. And not forgetting when Spokes Day came. When Spokes Day came around, that man must start commentary. Despite already knowing him from school, he automatically became a second father figure to me. That man is so cool, no doubt. I was happy when my mom told me about him. I accept him with open arms. I will never forget all the love, small talk, but most importantly, advice he would give to me as a young man. We love you, Bunty, even though it would be hard for mommy. Just know that we will take good care of her and may her soul rest in peace until we meet again. Love you. Thank you, Shimar. And now I call upon Mr. Alexander, Mr. George's neighbor. Uh, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Oh, he's coming. He's down at the back, coming up. And uh, followed by a song by one of the siblings. And then the final tribute will come from where it has to come from. My tribute is in song, Bridge of a Troubled Water. When you worry, feeling small, when the tears are in your eyes, I will dry them all, yes, I'm on your side. Oh, when times get rough And the friends just can't be found Like a bridge over troubled waters I will lay you down When you're dug and out when you're on the street When evening falls so hard I'll comfort you, yes I'll take your part Oh, when the darkness comes And the pain is all like a bridge over troubled waters, I will lay you down. So sail on, silver boy, sail on by. Your time has come to shine. All your dreams are on their way, yes. See how they shine. Oh, if you need a friend, I'm a sailing right behind, like a bridge over troubled waters. I will ease your mind like a bridge over troubled water. I will ease your mind like a bridge over troubled waters. I will ease your mind. Comforting words in moments like this, like a bridge over troubled waters, I will ease your mind and ease your pain. So we have a song by the 
sibling or we cancel that one? So we have a, oh, okay, short speech. Good day to everyone. Um, the only thing I want to say to my brother, and something I tell him every single day, is thank you, okay? Thank you. For my 30-something years on this earth, I've seen my brother every single day. And uh, it's very hard right now to do this, okay? I pray every day to be able to stand strong here today. And I know if you were saying, would I say, Jella, you're stronger than that, okay? And the only thing I could say to you, brother, thank you. Thank you for helping me with my children. Thank you for being there with me in the hospital every single day, okay? Thank you for every single thing that you have done for me. You never say no to me, never. And being the seventh of the ninth, you watch me as a little sister every day. Sometimes I see myself say to you, you know, I'm married, and you used to laugh, okay? And clearly, I remember the day of my wedding. My brother turned and asked me, you sure? You don't want me to go and tell them you change your mind? And you guys don't understand the relationship we have. And standing here today, being here today to actually say goodbye to my brother is tough. But Andre, I love you. And within hours before you die, you know, I told you, I love you. And I know that you know every single day in your heart that I love you. Rest in peace, bro. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, the final tribute before we break out into worship will be done by Miss Lindona Celestine George. Good afternoon to everyone. First of all, I would like to say thank you to everyone for coming out and celebrating the life of this wonderful man here, the best father anyone could have, and certainly the best husband anyone could have, and certainly the best brother anyone could have. This is a tribute to no other person than Mr. Andre George, my loving husband. From the very moment I set my eyes on you, I certainly knew you were the one, that you would be mine forever, and that it was meant to be, you were meant to be my husband. Forever. A gift from God above. You were my angel, an angel that showered me with nothing but unconditional love and kindness that I would cherish, and I certainly would cherish those memories forever. In my heart, from you, my darling, your smile was so smoothing. Your personality with a heartbeat that was made solid as gold. To us, deciding that we would get married. I remember when you popped the question to me. I could never forget that. Say, Celeste, Dredon was only two years. You said to me, Celeste, I think it's time. Let's get married after living three years, together for three years. I remember I didn't even answer you for two weeks because I wanted to make sure that you knew what you were doing. And when I did say yes, I remember it was the happiest day of your life. We became one. We did everything together. Everything together. 
Even when people tell you stories of me, you either call me or you text me. You never hide anything from me. And I did the same. I remember when we got married, it was only a week. And someone came and told me they saw my husband in a bar with a lady. And they told me, do not tell your husband. And I remember just after speaking to them, I called my husband and I told him. And I said to the person, I never keep anything away from Andre. Andre was special. He was one in a million. He put his family first. He loved his children. After many years of having Drader, AJ, he was a single father for many years. 11 years after, when AJ was 11, Drader came along. I remember the smile it brought to his face. I had C-section. And I remember coming downstairs, and he was sitting in the lobby in maternity ward, waiting for me to come down. And when I came down, I saw the big smile on his face. When we went into the ward, normally they would keep the baby by the nurse's station. So he was there admiring his baby. Wow, that's a cute child. I wonder if that's my child. <laughs> and well, we were not married at the time. So when I went by my bed and they brought the baby to me, I remember he saying to the nurse, nurse, are you wicked? All you know, that is my son and didn't tell me anything. I want to thank you, Andre, because we were together for nine years. And out of those nine years, we were married together for six. And to me, it wasn't just six years. It felt like 60 years. When you got sick on January 8th, I remember the night before we were at PB's. And I'm wearing red today because that's what you last wore when we went out. You were wearing red and white. So I choose today to wear red as a symbol of the love you had for me. I remember you expressing your love for me and telling me how good of a wife I am. Hearing it from you, I do not need to hear it from anybody else. And hearing it from anybody else doesn't mean anything to me as what it meant hearing it from you. When you were awarded at the General Hospital, I leave home at 6.30, and I get home at sometime 10 o'clock. I did that religiously for almost two months. Tired, weary, but I didn't give up. Sometimes I felt that I couldn't go on, but when I think of the love you had for me, and the good man that you are, I did it. Sometimes I scream. Sometimes I felt as though I was going crazy. But when you said to the nurses, that's my wife, it made me feel good. It feels that I had to do what I'm doing. So I would like to say to you, my dearest husband, I thank you for the nine wonderful years you gave me. You gave me a beautiful son. When you died, he picked up some of your attributes. He's as brave and strong as you were. He's my comfort at night. He's the one taking your space on the bedside. I thank you, my darling. I would love you forever. I would like to say a very special thank you to the doctors and the nurses of the male surgical ward where Andrew was warded. Also the doctors, the doctors and nurses at the 
Male Medical Ward, Dr. Fernandez in the Oncology Department, and I would like to say a special thank you to my dear friend, Nurse Jocelyn George, who were always there for me. Or I could call on her anytime and she would be there. Thank you to his siblings. I thank you very much for allowing me to come into your family. It was nine wonderful years. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming up. And thank you, Lindona, for thanking us. Didn't know that you had that strength. I now invite the brother to continue the rest of the celebration. Okay, at this time we will have the second scripture reading. And this is going to be done by Trisha Simon, sister-in-law. Pleasant good afternoon to each and every one of you here today. The scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as we were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his, of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing that, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of, the, of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve sin. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now invite the worship team to please come back and lead us in worship. And while they're coming, we recognize the presence of Minister Lennox Andrew, Parliamentary Representative for St. Andrew Southwest, and also the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Mr. Elvis Moraine. Thank you for being here, sirs. <laughs> Okay, so we want to also recognize the presence of uh, Mrs. Evelyn Pierre, Parliamentary Rep for St. Andrews Southeast. Please forgive me. Uh, we've got permission of the relatives to do an offering. And while we're doing this song, we'd like for that offering to be lifted. Thank you. Stand with me, please. Uh,
Thank you. Please have your seats. So this time we invite we invite Mr. Ashton George, Andre's brother. He's going to come and do the eulogy. Pleasant good afternoon. Bonte. To me, Bonte is a legend. At the tender age, Bonte is one of the guys that said to me, bro, you are a soldier. Although mom wanted me to be a teacher. However, I fulfilled both of the dreams, be a teacher, then do my soldiering. Andre Bunty George was born to live in a Frank and Joseph Frederick on April 10th, 1976. He was the second of nine children, but the firstborn son of mom, now deceased, living a Frank. His siblings by his mom are Ansher, Anthony, myself, Asher, Anderson, Anisha, Alina, and Andrew. His siblings by his dad are Patricia, Tracy, Doug, Joseph, Christopher, and Kenneth, niece and nephew. Andre attended the St. Andrew's Catholic School and from a tender age was very dedicated and serious about his work. He then sat and was successful in common entrance exam and earned a pass to Granville Secondary School, after which he furthered his studies at T.A. Marichal Community College. As a little boy, he loved to play marbles soccer, and cricket in our backyard, as well as make and fly kites and roast cashew nut. Some of his hobbies are doing construction, fishing, sewing. He taught himself to sew and went on to sew clothing for himself, his family members, and others. Andre always had a passion and a love for mathematics and technical drawing. This knowledge, this was clearly demonstrated in his years of service as a teacher, imparting knowledge and shaping the, and molding the young minds of the nation's future. Andre always dreamt about becoming a police officer. Subsequently, he had a change of heart and decided to seek employment at Coates Grenada Limited, and there he worked for about a year or two. He then answered the call to become a teacher and served for 17 wonderful years at St. David's Catholic Secondary School he later was transferred to Granville Secondary School, and there he served an additional five years, devoting his time and energy to children who he loved dearly. The subject taught were obviously mathematics and technical drawing. Andrew also gave up his time and service to other schools like Wesley College, Parkley Government, and Program for Adolescents Murder. In total, Andrew George gave 25 years of service as a teacher of this nation. The Grenadian Union of Teachers had definitely lost a legend. Andre had five sons, three of whom are deceased. His third born is Andre George Jr. or AJ, as he subsequently affectionately called. Later on in his life, Andre met the love of his life, Lindana George, and together they had a son, Drayden George. Andre and Lindana spent nine years 
of togetherness. Six of those nine years were spent in marital bliss, and they totally enjoyed spending time in each other company. Besides his professional and family life, Andre also had a life where he devoted his time and extracurricular activities. He always got involved voluntarily himself tirelessly to assist whenever necessary. He loved and enjoyed sports, namely basketball, football, and athletics, and would always get involved in either by assisting with the training of teams and athletes, or by commentating at almost all the various sports meet, especially in the parish of St. Andrews and St. David's, along with commentating. Andre was one of the master of ceremonies within the community. He was a well-known MC in events like wedding, basketball, small gold tournament, sports, and numerous queen show. Whenever you you get stuck and you need a pull out, just call Bunty. He was, Andre was a member of the planning committee of the St. Andrews Basketball Fraternity. He was also a mentor for the STAR program together with Dr. Ch Chitman, Chitman, as well as the PRO of the BB's Club, as we saw the tribute today. Andre lived a fulfilled life which will always be remembered by everyone whom he came in contact with. His memory will forever be etched in our hearts. We will surely miss you, bro. Goodbye. Brother, husband, Father, uncle, teacher, Is this one? Coach, mentor. coach, mentor, cousin, friend. and friend. May your soul rest in peace, bro. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ashton, for this sterling tribute. At this time, we invite Pastor Samuel Nyes, the host pastor and the officiating pastor, to take his position at the pulpit. Good afternoon to everyone. Let me express sincere condolences to Lindona to her two children, to the siblings of the deceased, and other family members extended who today mourn the passing of their dear one. I stand on the protocol that was established. If, however, we left any person out that we should have recognized, we do recognize you. Colle fellow colleagues with us, visiting ministers, I've asked Pastor Bennett to drum for us today, so he's today not pastoring, but drumming. We acknowledge you. And also, I've asked Pastor George, colleague of the deceased, to sit with us. And we appreciate your, your presence. Again, if there are other colleague ministers with us from the other organizations of religious state, we welcome you and acknowledge you. The scripture spoke very, very loudly already. I'm just going to re emphasize it to you.
No one, no one can do for you what you have to do for yourself. What do I mean? Nobody can do for anybody what they must do for themselves. That's the way God has made us. And that's one of the reasons I, I appreciate serving God, because he did not make me a puppet on a string. Neither did he make me a robot where he can train me up and control me from wherever. He made me free so that I can choose to serve him or not to serve him. When, you, when you've become a grown-up, when you've become an adult, you, you actually order your, your steps, your own steps. And God respects that. However, he has warned us that we are going to die. We are going to rise. And it's not fake. It's real. Andre! Right. We are going to die. We are going to die. However, God has made it possible that death is absolutely not the final say. Amen. God has the final say. And the final say is that there is life beyond the grave. There is life beyond the grave. I believe it with all my heart. And that's why at 21... 21, 1973, at 21, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Whether you believe it or not, but God has kept me those 50 years. Yeah. And today I know for certainty that dying is no big deal for me. I can actually make up my own program and leave it because I know what I want. I want plenty, plenty people to get saved in my service, in my service, my funeral service. I want plenty people to get saved. So whoever I will identify as a preacher must be somebody who will make an altar call and invite people to accept Jesus Christ as their savior. The first, the verse of scripture I want to just leave with you in this brief message before I'm done is the last verse of the second scripture that was read in the service. Listen to what it says. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. What it says. For, right, for the wages. Everybody know about wages. Everybody knows about wages, right? Right? So after you've worked for the week, the fortnight, the month, you get paid. Yeah? Right. In this case, the wages of sin is death. Wow. Yeah. Right? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's not hard to understand, is it? Right. So I'd just like to call upon us in 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 humility and respect for your your adult. Life, you're an adult, you're free to choose to serve God or not to serve God. But if I am um, to give you my humble advice, I would encourage you to stop working for sin 
and accept God's gift, free gift of eternal life. And that free gift is not through nobody religion, including mine. It's through Christ, the Son of God. All right? So when I talk to people, I tell them I don't push religion. I don't push religion. I push reality. The reality is that we cannot go back to God dead. We cannot go back to God dead. We read the passage in Ecclesiastes that the body goes, the, the, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who give it. So that's, that's, that's simple. That is what has happened here. What has happened here is that the spirit, which is life, the spirit which is our life, go back to God, and the dust, we're going to bring it up the road just now. And that's it. And that's the reality of death. But death is not the final say. God has the final say. And the final say is based on my choice while I was alive. Yeah. So I want to encourage us to, to read a book. Buy a book if you don't have one, as I close. Buy a book if you don't have one. Right? And read for yourself. You read other books, read this book too. Because there's a gentleman talking to you. And I'm sure the things he's going to tell you will not only impact your time, but also your eternity. Father God, I want to thank you for all that has been said and done here today. Thank you for everyone that has paid tribute to this outstanding gentleman. I stay in my veranda and I see him drive up and come out of his vehicle and looking sharp, sharp, sharp. I say, wow. And I heard, then I heard he fell ill. I'm wondering, so no way he got to be back with us. But God, you chose. Today, we take this opportunity to say to all his colleagues, all his friends, all of us, we need Life. Life is your gift to us. So I pray that all of us will receive that life you are offering us. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Let me take the opportunity also to lift up the family before you, Father, and to ask you to continue to watch them over and lay your mighty hand upon them and to sustain them in this time. I thank you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are going to depart the church just in a little bit. There are just maybe a few more things to do, an expression of thanks and so on. Also, we would want to do closure. How we are going to do closure is that the family will take final view and the undertaker and his family would together close the casket at the top here. So could we invite the chairperson to come back, call for the expression of thanks, and we do a final hymn where the family is. Okay, so at this time we call Sister Anisha Frank, who's going to do the vote of thanks. Um, please come. And while she's coming, the drivers of PE213 and PZ629, please report to your vehicles. You're blocking someone, so please, drivers, vehicles, PE213, PZ629, please report to your vehicles. Thank you. Just a simple thank you. On behalf of the George and Frank family, I would like to say thank you to everyone. Thanks for the support. In any way you have reached out to us, I just want to say thank you.
Thank you very much. So we are going to now have the final hymn. And while this, the hymn is being sung, we invite our ministers of government and also the permanent secretary to leave together with the district education officer. We'll do that and then we're going to have we, we're asking you to please allow the family to go together with the casket, casket and then we're going to follow. Thank you. And 5102, kindly report to your vehicles for us, please. Drive us up P4402-5102. Thank you. On that bright and cloudless morning when the day is bright.
to conclude what we started at the church, I've asked Pastor George, close friend of the deceased, to do the Praise the Lord. Yes, bless the Lord. Test it. Okay, good afternoon everybody. And we we thank you. It's it's a lot of us, so we have to I'll only project my voice as far as it can go. <laughs> All right. So we thank you for being here to pay our last respects to our friend Andre Eric George and of course to lend a support to the family. Let's just bow our hearts as we pray. Father, we thank you that you have 
taking us here safely where we can do the final part of this ceremony. We pray for our strength for the family and for the relatives. We pray for your grace. We pray for your peace. We ask you to lead and direct. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's do the first and the last verse of when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal When the children of all shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the When the roll is on, let's do verse 2. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share, when his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the sky and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Jesus Christ in John chapter 14 encouraged, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I'm happy to announce that we have the assurance that when Jesus returns, Andre is going to be with him. And this is so based on the profession of his faith. Not because of anything we have done today, but because Andrew himself repented of his sins and accepted Jesus Christ right. as Savior. Hence the reason we have this assurance. Let's take the third stanza. Let us labor for the Master. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is lived and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Chorus again, when the roll is called up yonder, it's called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw the new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down from God out of heaven. And a great voice out of the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be their God. And God himself shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So while it's okay to cry, the time is coming when all our tears are going to be wiped away. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to do the Lord's my shepherd. The the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not walk. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me. 
the quiet waters by my soul he doth my soul he doth restore again and me to walk doth make within the path of righteousness Yeah, though, yeah, though I walk in death's dark veil, I'll surely fail. No just hold it. Just hold it still. Just hold it. Just hold it. Just hold it. Me and thy rod and staff, they comfort. Still, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me in God's house. I'll do the I'll do it. Yeah, do it. I'll do the rest of it. You do it? Do it yeah. You read anything then? Yeah. No, I inasmuch as it hath pleased our Heavenly Father to allow to pass from this life our brother Andre Eric George, it is our sad duty to commit his body to the tomb. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for and waiting for the glorious appearing of our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ, who shall change our mortal bodies and fashion it into a body like his. To him be all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Amen. Amen. My table thou hast furnished. In presence so of in. my foes, uh, mm, 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 with all uh, uh, Do we know? Yes, we're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, yeah. Goodness. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely Follow me and in God's house forevermore. My dwelling place shall be. Okay, we're now the tempted and tried. Are others living about us never molested though in the wrong father along will know all about it father along will understand why chair up my brothers live in Sunshine, he'll understand it all by and by. When death has come and taken a loved one, it leaves a home so lonely and trapped. Then do we wonder while others prosper, living so after year father along will know all about it 
will do man is lonely by birth and then anyone who feels they want to raise a hymn you can kindly do so man is lonely by birth man is lonely a pilgrim on earth born to be king time is but a 